Hey folks, I'm Andrew with Viking Electronics. Welcome to part three of three, the final video in the series on programming your CTG-2A. In this final video, Al is going to teach you about the time sync settings for your CTG-2A, go through setting up one or multiple different event schedules, as well as using the calendar section to automatically change schedules. Like the video if you do, and be sure to click the subscribe button to the Viking Electronics YouTube channel. All right, let's get into the content. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the clock screen and then take care of that calendar error that we had on the display at the bottom of the unit. So you can see when I clicked on the clock, it brings us to the clock screen. We have some of the basic clock parameters up here. I would recommend leaving the, the time base set to internal clock. If you're in a different time zone other than central, you will wanna change this time zone selection to whatever time zone you're actually in, Eastern, Pacific. If you do happen to change it, click on save and upload to send that change to the unit's memory. I'm going to click no for this question about clock time because we're going to take care of the clock in a minute. We have a uh, selection for daylight savings time. You can either check that or uncheck it depending on if you're in an area that observes daylight savings time. Under tools, there's the ability to program daylight savings time when it actually occurs in case they make another change in daylight savings time somewhere down the road. You can see up here on the right, we have the clock time area. The read button is actually what allows you to read what's in the unit's memory for clock time and you can see it's currently it's set for January 1st 2010. There's different ways to go about setting it. You click on the PC time button then it draws the time settings from the computer and, and throws the values in those fields. If I wanted to send this to the unit's memory this date and time I could just click the send button See how it shows the unit was updated. It's got the current time and date now. There's certainly other choices. You can actually manually set the time yourself, time and date, pick a date, month, year, and then if you click set, it's gonna set that manually entered information over to the unit's memory. This NTP sync button down at the bottom just kind of forces the unit to do a sync to the NTP server that's specified down here at the bottom of the screen. And by default, that's just a pool of Viking NTP servers that we provide. You can see the zero.vikingpoolntp.org address. So if I click the NTP sync button, it's asking me if I do wanna update the clock if this sync is successful. So I'll click yes. And that's you know forcing it to do a sync to this server. And if it's successful, it should come back in a second or so and say that it is. And it was. So now the unit has uh, which should be a very accurate time and date in its memory. And you can see this time server area down at the bottom of the screen. By default, it comes loaded in its memory to use the Viking pool. And so we have the read PC settings button where you can actually read what the computer is using for a time server. People that might do this are, are when they want the CTG 2A's clock to be perfectly synced with the computer's network time. I can do another sync and make sure that the unit is able to sync to that server. And it looks like it is. It, updated its time based on what that server is providing for a time. If I'm going to leave this or I wanted to use this as the server, then I also want to do a save and an upload again to make sure the unit's memory has been updated to use this computer's NTP server settings. The NTP port selection down here at the bottom just allows you to decide which port on the network the CTG2 uses to try to reach that time server and it defaults to port 123. That's about it for the clock screen. I'm going to close the clock screen and go back to the event screen. Now we're back at the event programming screen and we're ready to start programming our events. In this first round, we're gonna show how you might program events using a single schedule. So many of the applications in real use, like when they're used at manufacturing plants and even in some of the schools, they're really only running one schedule in the CTG 2A. So we're gonna build a short schedule just so you can see how, how the events are programmed. First thing you do is double click anywhere on this next available event line, which is number one in our case, and it brings up the edit event screen. The task is going to be playing a certain wave file, so in this particular case we'll play the buzzer sound. The uh, schedule field, you can see how there's not any uh, choices in there right now. That's because we actually have to assign names to the different schedules that we want to use. In this case, I think we'll just call it schedule one. 
and then uh, I can either tab around or click on fields when I want to move around. This start time field is where you're setting the time that that wave file is going to play. In this case, just for an example, I'll pick 7 a.m. These start date and stop date boxes, you normally leave them unchecked if this is an event that's going to be repeating every day or for a long period, let's say. The uh, start and stop date is intended for events that are only temporary. If you had a wave file that you only wanted to play for one week or two weeks, then you would use the start and stop dates to pick the date range that that event wave file is going to play. And then once the stop date is passed, it's not going to play that wave file anymore. So they're normally left unchecked if it's just a wave file that's going to play every day. The notes field is a spot where you can put the notes about the wave file that is playing at that particular time, this 7 a.m. event, start of the day, whatever you want to put in the note field. It's certainly optional. It's just for your own record keeping. And you can see how we have checkboxes for each day of the week for this particular event at 7 a.m. We can pick which days of the week that that event is supposed to go off. For example, I'll just turn off Saturdays and Sundays, so it's just going to be a Monday through Friday event. Click apply, and you'll see how it populated that event up on event number one, and then it took us automatically to editing event number two. It's actually building the rest of the event schedules fairly easy because I can just jump straight to the start time and change the start time to the next time that a wave file is supposed to play. If I wanted, I could change the wave file to play some other sound for this next event. The notes would change. I'm just going to eliminate the notes for now. How about the start? Click apply and you'll see how it populated the playing of that wave file at 8 a.m. On, on event number two and I'm, I'm editing event number three. I'll add a couple more events in this schedule. Another option is the, the CTG 2A has an auxiliary relay built in and provides our auxiliary relay output on screw terminals. You can set up timed events that are going to control that auxiliary relay. One example is a timed auxiliary relay. So if I just needed a relatively brief contact closure from the CTG 2A when, when a certain time came up, I would use this timed auxiliary relay to do that. The duration field is how long the relay is going to operate when that time comes up. You can see it's half second increments. So if I set it for five, it's going to operate the auxiliary relay for five seconds. And then I can pick the time of day that I want that relay to close. Click apply. And you see I have now I have a timed auxiliary relay event for 8 a.m. seven days a week. The timing is five seconds. Another option for the auxiliary relay is to program it to turn on on at a certain time of day. So like in this example, I'll set it to turn on the auxiliary relay at 9 a.m. and then I could have another auxiliary relay off event that would turn it back off at a certain time of day. I'll just for an example, I'll use 7 p.m. So then now at 9 a.m. the relay is going to turn on and it's going to stay on all day long until 7 p.m. and then the auxiliary relay off event would turn it back off again. Another option for events for a task anyway is to manually create your own time sync event. I can set the task to be time sync, pick the schedule that I want for that time sync, and then pick what time of the day I want to use that or have it do the time sync, 2 a.m. in this case, or it could be any time of day you want. So that's probably enough events uh, at least to start with. If this was for real application, I would fill out all the rest of the events for the rest of the day or however many events I need for the, within that 24 hour period. But there's a couple of things that you normally might want to do before you upload the information to the unit's memory. First one is this sort function. You go to tools and then sort events and it's, it's actually done it already. It, we don't have very many events, so it didn't take it very long. That just makes sure that your events are in chronological order on the event screen. So if I program some out of sequence, it would have rearranged them so they're in chronological order. And then the only other thing is uh, the conflicts button down here at the bottom. It, the unit has the ability to kind of review our event schedule and see if there's any conflicts. Of course, our event schedule is not very big, but on this conflict screen, I can select schedule one and have it do a review of my programming of the events in schedule one. As you can see, it didn't find any conflicts. So you can just close that conflict screen. So 
now that I've went through that sort events, I've checked to make sure there's no conflicts. I can just click save down here at the bottom and then upload, uh, send that over to the unit's memory. Then you can see how it noticed that there is not any time sync events in our schedule and it's asking if we want the programming software to automatically add a 12 a.m. time sync so that it would sync its clock every day. If you're going to leave the CTG 2A connected to the network all the time so that it is able to do a time sync like we did on the clock screen, then you can select yes for this question and, and allow it to automatically create a time sync event. So every day at midnight, it's going to sync its clock to that NTP server that was specified on the clock screen, whether that's the network time or some internet NTP server. So now that I've saved and uploaded that data, the unit is really ready to run. If we were all finished programming, we we're setting up this single schedule, we're ready to have it start running this schedule and playing those WAV files at those times. You can just click this run button and you'll see how there's only the schedule one available as a schedule choice. And you click start and the program exits and the unit's off running that schedule and we'll play those WAV files at those times. We've created kind of a simple schedule for some sort of a school or facility where the events are going to be the same every day of the week. There's some schools where the different days of the week have different class times. And I just wanted to kind of show an example of how you could at least sometimes still handle that with just one schedule using the day of week checkboxes. So I'm going to start building an event schedule for this school in the schedule field. I'll just call it schedule one again. I already picked a wave file to play 7 a.m. again. And I just intended that for Monday. So now I'm going to click apply. And just for this example, I'm going to leave the wave file the same. I would program all of my uh, Monday events then. See how I program to 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m. event. If I had programmed all these events for, for a Monday in the school, then if Tuesday is different, still use Schedule 1. Just use the Tuesday checkbox to start programming my events for Tuesdays. So you can see for Tuesdays then I have slightly different times. And I can kind of keep following that same concept for each day of the week, at least any days that need their own programming. So you kind of get the idea that you're programming in all the events for each day of the week independently, just having the certain day of the week checked that you want those events to play. And I could repeat this process then for Thursday and Friday, and essentially the school could have completely different timed events each day of the week and still only running one schedule. Once I was all finished building this schedule for each day of the week, then I normally would do the sort events function, which you can see how that did rearrange the events. I should still do a conflict check to review for con conflicts and there wasn't any and then save and upload this to the unit's memory and now we again do not have a time sync event in there. I'll answer yes to that question which makes it add the time sync event for schedule one and then it's ready to run this event schedule. Select run schedule one, hit the start button and it's off running that schedule. I connect back to normal fashion, file open. So yeah, I'm going to delete these e existing events that are in here and and show you another way that you can do programming of events when you do need to have multiple schedules because there certainly are some applications for more than one schedule and you can have up to 14 different schedules total. So we're going to go back and uh, we'll use the bell three second file again for the WAV file. This is my very first event so I do have to input a name for this schedule and I'll call it schedule one again. Program a couple events here in this first schedule. So we've got a few events anyway in the schedule one. One good example of a, a second schedule would be at schools when they have, for example, a two hour late start. Instead of starting at uh, 7 a.m., we'll have them starting with the first wave file playing at 9 a.m. instead of 7 a.m. And since this is going to be my first event in schedule two, go to the schedule field and type in the name that I want to use for the second schedule. And then I'll just use schedule two. I can jump down to start time and put in the 9 a.m. time that I want for a late start. Actually, just to uh, make things a little bit easier, I'm going to call this a late start schedule to make it a little more self-explanatory. Click apply. You kind of get the idea there that we've created a few events in the second schedule. At least we have enough now to show you at least what it's like to have two schedules in the system. As soon as you have multiple schedules like we do now, then you have access to this calendar button at the bottom. It allows you to pick which days on the calendar the unit is 
is going to run which schedule. You can see how I went to the calendar screen. Currently all of 2019, it shows the year up here. If we ran the unit in the calendar mode, it would uh, only run schedule one currently. If I know some certain days are going to be late start days at the school, I just select the late start schedule down at the bottom, and then I can selectively start turning days on the calendar screen to that color. You'll notice how if I click on them once, it turns them white, which is a disabled day where there would be no events on that day. But then if I click it a second time, then it turns it the color to run the schedule that I've selected down at the bottom. Select all the days that I want to run the late start schedule. Then when I'm finished making all of my changes on the calendar screen, I click the supply button down at the bottom. It takes it a little while to uh, apply those changes, but now it's done that and I can click the close button. And one thing you'll notice right away on the event programming screen is that now that I've done that, I have some of these change schedules on the event screen created automatically when I applied all those changes on the calendar screen. We're pretty much ready to save and upload, but before you do any upload, you normally would go to the tools and then sort events. It rearranged our events for us a little bit. Review each one of the schedules for conflicts. Notice how it has an option for automatically switch schedules. Really what it's doing is, is looking for conflicts in that uh, calendar programming that we had done. And there wasn't any, so we can close that screen. At this point, it's ready to save and upload that data. It's offering us the option of having the programming software add time sync events automatically. If it is going to be left plugged into the network all the time, and it will be in our case, then you would click yes, and it'll upload those records to the unit, and you can see where it added the time sync events down here at the bottom. And now that we've done calendar programming, when you go to the run button, you can either select a schedule or see how it has this automatically switch schedules option. And if we want it to follow that calendar programming, then we want to leave it set to this automatically switch schedules and click the start button. It has options to manually pick a schedule and tell it to start, but if I tell it to run schedule one and start, it's only going to run schedule one. It's not going to follow the calendar programming and automatically switch. So in this case, I want it to follow that calendar programming and most customers would. So I'll leave it set to automatically switch schedules and then start and it exits the program and now it's off running that schedule and would play those wave files on the appropriate days. We're done. Congratulations. Hey, check out the first video if you want to review connecting to the CTG-2A or the second video in the series if you want a refresher on uploading audio files and your trigger settings. I'm Andrew with Viking Electronics. Thanks for watching.